It is August in North Texas, so that means it's time to start scouting for deer season. Time to start getting out, hitting the trails, looking for sign, hanging your cameras. Something that I always like to do when I hang cameras, I leave some minerals there to attract the deer to the camera. Uh, especially this time of the year, the bucks are going into from velvet to hard horn. They need some minerals to help that horn kind of harden up. Uh, the does are weaning their fawns, they need more minerals in their diet. All the deer need more minerals, namely salt, calcium, stuff like that. Now, Texas is a little bit weird in that there's a ton of private land. So on private land, there's, there's really no rule as to what you can leave on the ground for deer. You could, you know, leave fresh apples out there if you want. Most people use corn feeders, um, anything like that. In terms of public land, it's pretty limited and it depends on the property. Uh, the place I go to, you cannot hunt over bait, but there's no hard and fast rule about using minerals in front of a camera. So if I'm not hunting over it, generally it's fine. And I'm primarily using minerals. I mix a little bit more in there just kind of as an attractant to get it going, but that gets consumed pretty quick. But it's the minerals that kind of remain in the soil for a little while. So in terms of using those minerals, it's really valuable just to pull the deer to your camera so you can take a survey of what deer are in that area. Now, it's not necessarily exactly where I'm gonna put my stand or anything like that. Sometimes I put my stand close, but really it's a survey of, hey, what deer are within, you know, a few hundred yards of where I'm hanging this camera? And it's a good way to do that survey. So of course you can go to your local sporting goods store and buy a pre-made mineral mix. Mostly it's salt, there's calcium, there's phosphorus, there's uh, selenium, there's some other stuff in there, but it's mostly salt. You can go buy the bag that's got the big buck on it, you know, 20, 20 inch wide rack, 10 or 12 point. But those companies are in business not because they make that stuff, but because they buy all these minerals from other suppliers and then they mix it together and distribute it to sporting goods stores. So there's a really, really hefty margin in there. So a lot of times you can save quite a bit by making your own. Now I'm not saying that those, you know, prepackaged mixes don't work. And if you're in a hurry, yeah, absolutely, go grab one. It's, it's gonna work pretty well. But making your own mix, you can control it a little bit better. There's not gonna be nearly as much just kind of filler in there, because if you look at some of the ingredients, sometimes there's stuff that's just kind of junk just because it's sold by weight. So they're just, there's stuff that really doesn't help you, but it just adds weight. So you can control that. You can control what's in it, but you can also save quite a bit of money. I suggest just going to your local just Walmart or just dollar store, maybe you can go to Dollar General, find some stuff that's just super cheap, just you know, country store type of place, you can find some really good deals. So the first thing that I always start with, and it's kind of the basis of what you're doing with this mineral mix, is I get salt. Just regular table salt, and this is non-iodized because you don't need iodine for this. Iodine is an additive to salt that's basically put in there for people. I'm sure if you have iodized salt, it's not gonna hurt anything, but I got this for 40 cents at Walmart, just this whole jug of salt. So that's kind of my foundation. And then the next thing I get, and this is more as an attractant. So salt, primary mineral, this is more of an attractant. And I just get a thing of brown sugar. Now this cost me about a dollar for this whole bag. And the reason I like to use brown sugar is because it seems like it attracts less ants than just pure white sugar. It also doesn't look quite as unnatural when you spread it on the ground, so it's not gonna alarm you know, any other deer and it's not gonna tell other hunters exactly where you're set up. So I mix some brown sugar in there. Then I will also get a thing of basically Jell-O or knockoff brand. This is just Walmart brand Jell-O mix. So basically it's got some artificial flavoring, some artificial color, but the biggest thing, the biggest reason you're doing this is it has a really strong sweet smell. So those other things work great. The salt's the primary mineral. It's just like a salt lick for cattle. That's really what they're going after. The sweet really attracts them to it and gets them to want to eat it. But this is what they can actually detect and smell. So they're not gonna smell the salt from 200 yards away, but they're gonna smell this. So that's really what brings them in. So I just mix those things together you know, shake it up in just a Ziploc bag, and that's what I'll pour out on the dirt. So one of those blocks that you buy, or maybe it's one of the Wildlife Innovations blocks, or one of the big bags full of mix, you know, that's gonna cost you at least five bucks by the time you're done. And yeah, you're gonna get more matter out of it, but considering I paid 40 cents for that big tub of salt, 50 cents for the Jello, 
and a dollar for the bag of brown sugar, which I used half of that in here, you're going to get good quantity of stuff. Really, you don't need any more than this. Like for the way I'm using it, just to get stuff in front of your camera, you don't need any more than this. And this just cost me a little over a dollar, less than two dollars for all this stuff. So, tends to work pretty well. Now, if you were making a whole bunch, you probably are gonna be better off going to like a feed store, maybe a tractor supply, or you know, one of those you know regional feed stores. You can probably get you know bulk salt and trace mineral stuff that you would use for cattle. And that's probably gonna you know work pretty well and be pretty cost effective. But if you're just using a little bag to put in front of your camera, I use something like this. So of course, don't do anything stupid. Don't put this out where you're gonna get yourself in trouble. Be responsible with it. But if you're just looking at a quick and easy deer attractant just to get something in front of your camera, not a bad way to go. Now that I've got this all mixed up, it's time to hit the road and start scouting for deer. Until next time, stay safe, be free, and never stop seeking adventure.